Utility hikes coming to one local city here in the valley. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Terrytown residents will likely see a noticeable increase in their utility bill in the very near future. Last month, city engineer Jeff Wolf told the council that based on projected water usage and expenses, the city stands to lose nearly $104,000 in water revenues. Wolf proposed adjustments to the flat rates and cost per thousand gallons in an effort to curb losses or possibly break even. The council prompted Wolf to draft a revised 2024 ordinance reflecting a rate increase of 13%, which will be discussed during tonight's Terrytown City Council meeting. Well, there are now two candidates that have tossed their hat into the ring for the upcoming legislative race to replace Senator Steve Erdman of Bayard as the District 47 representative. Larry Bollinger of Alliance issued a news release on Tuesday that he's entering the race saying the top thing needed in the district is a candidate that is a steward to the people, something he says has not been the case in decades. Bollinger joins Paul Stroman of Sydney, who submitted his paperwork seeking the post on January 5th, the very first day candidates could file for primary races for statewide office. Erdman is in the final of his second consecutive term as a state senator and will be termed out of office at the end of this year. And sticking with the legislature, as the chair of the legislature's revenue committee has sent a letter to the Secretary of State asking that the referendum petition seeking repeal of the Opportunity Scholarship Act to be declared unconstitutional. In a letter to Bob Evnen, Senator Luann Linehan says the state constitution explicitly places the power of taxation in the hands of state lawmakers, and LB 753 is a revenue measure that can only be changed by the legislature. Linehan continued she respects the petition process, but if that law could be repealed by referendum, it would undermine the ability of lawmakers to set the state's revenue policies. Rebecca Firestone with Open Sky said preventing voters from weighing in on a state revenue policy undermines democracy, stifles public participation, and removes a check on elected officials. Responding to Linehan's letter, Evden said no date has been set for a decision, but he hopes to address the matter without delay. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Welcome back. Congressman Adrian Smith has joined the likes of Governor Jim Pillen and Senator Pete Ricketts, who have traveled to the southern border to see the growing issue of illegal crossings firsthand. Smith visited the southern border last week with a large group of representatives and told KNB News there are some common sense solutions to the devastating scene he witnessed firsthand. In some places, the wall and more sections of the wall make sense. Other places, other technology can and should be uh, uh, put in place and, and utilized, but the current situation is inhumane. It's dangerous for everyone, especially uh, families with children. I mean, the, I, I think the number is about 100,000 unaccompanied minors that have come across the border that we don't even know what's happening to them. Smith, who this week filed for re-election, said lawmakers must restore a pro-growth economy that boosts Nebraska ag, families, and small businesses, 
the exact opposite of what has happened under the policies of the Biden-Harris administration. Well, the UNL Extension Center hosted their holiday banquet last week at the Weeborg Center in Gehring and honored some of their own. The annual award for outstanding service to Panhandle Agriculture was awarded to Dr. Ivan Rush, a professor of beef nutrition at the Panhandle Research and Extension Center. Rush began his career in the Panhandle back in 1963 as an extension agent in Dawes County and continued to work for the UNL Extension Center until his 2008 retirement. Rush was also recently honored for his service to the industry by the Nebraska Cattlemen Association. Are new windows from Renewal by Anderson a great investment? You're darn right they are. Did you know that for less than your cable bill or cell phone bill each month, you could have new windows from Renewal by Anderson right now? Do the math. Renewal by Anderson windows will likely cut your energy bills significantly. They will likely substantially increase the value of your home. They're a great investment. Please contact our team now and ask about our fantastic financing options with approved credit right now. Renewal by Anderson, a great investment? You're darn right. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysi helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. Basketball top of mind here for the Thursday update. Let's start with action from last night at Cougar Palaces. WNCC wound up with a home split against Western Wyoming. In that opener, the Cougar women get that 12-game winning streak snapped by the Mustangs. The final was 75-67. After leading by eight points at the half, the Cougars got outscored by 16 in the second half. Both losses this season for the Cougar women have come to this Western Wyoming team. The Cougars now sitting at 15-2 this year, and their busy week continues tomorrow night with a women's game only trip on the road up to Casper. Chuck Schwartz will have that one for you tomorrow night on KOLT starting at 545. The men's game had plenty of high energy last night. The Cougars win their third straight game, winning it 91-79 in front of the home folks last night. A pair of freshmen have been scoring in bunches here of late. Both Willie Wilson and Caden Nation finished last night with 22 points apiece. The Cougars used a big 16-0 first half run to take control. Steven Oviad at 18 points and six rebounds in the win. The Cougars are now 10-7 on the season. Season. They'll be off this weekend before road action on Monday at Lamar. Let's look at the high school basketball weather pending, of course, now for everything it looks like over the next couple of days here in the region. Gearing supposed to host Wheatland, Wyoming tonight. We'll see about that beginning at 530. Gearing will trek to Gordon Rushville for a girls and boys doubleheader tomorrow. For Scott's Bluff, it's Cheyenne weekend. The Bearcats hosting Cheyenne Central tomorrow night with a trip to Cheyenne East High School on Saturday afternoon. Gearing games, of course, KMOR 93-3 both days with the Scott's Bluff games set for 107-3 the trail. Now let's rewind a couple of nights to that Nebraska men's basketball big upset over top-ranked Purdue. Really a dominant showing much of the night for head coach Fred Hoiberg's team. Happy for our guys. I, I talked to them going into this game about you know being part of teams that have knocked off the number one team in the country. I had a couple as a player and, and had a couple uh, as a coach at uh, my previous stop. And you know there's nothing like it to go out there and get this win. And I talked to our guys. About you know it probably be uh, you know people coming on the floor and enjoy it with with the fans 
and uh, you know now the challenge. You got to move on. You know we play in two days, which I think this is feels like about the 18th game in a row. We've had two days of prep, but you know we got to get over this one quickly. Um, but I did tell our guys to enjoy it, to, to have fun, and uh, uh, you know it certainly shows what we're capable of. Nebraska at Iowa coming up tomorrow night. Another big one for the Husker men. Also, want to make sure we mention quickly the Seacat Swim and Dive team. They're going to have their lone home meet of the year. That'll be tomorrow starting at 4.45 in the afternoon at the Scotts Bluff YMCA. That is the latest today from right here at the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, Panhandle residents are invited to delve into our local history through a new exhibit that highlights the work of the Civilian Conservation Corps at Scottsbluff National Monument. The Voluntary Work Relief Program was rolled out during the Great Depression and CCC members completed important conservation and infrastructure projects. One of these companies, Company 762, operated at the monument. Lead interpreter Eric Grunwald says during their brief tenure of existence, they made a noticeable impact. He also says there are some great other local ties with this exhibit. I think for a lot of our locals, what they're going to really enjoy seeing is 
this older newspaper here that has some of the advertisements for some of the businesses that uh, existed at that time. But not only that, but some of these names are, are still around. So uh, I'll give you an example. One of our volunteers, uh, he's got the middle name Hinshaw, and that's because it was his uh, grandfather's uh, last name on his mother's side. So he, he gets really jazzed up about say, seeing that J.F. Hinshaw Lumber Company advertisement. The Massick name, that's still around here. Uh, Downey Studio, you still hear that around here today. So I think, you know, seeing this uh, artifact from long ago and seeing how it still connects to the population here today is going to jazz people up. But also, we've just got some cool stuff. We've got some items on loan from the Legacy of the Plains Museum that, you know, they don't get put out into the public very much. So I think it's cool for people to see that too. You can visit this and other exhibits daily at the Scottsbluff National Monument Visitor Center from 8.30 to 4.30. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.